It happened. Elon Musk has just dropped a bombshell of a new clean Raptor 3. For the first time, we're seeing the Raptor 3 in the flesh. No more slideshow rendering. And it's got the entire community buzzing with excitement. Especially, it has made the whole NASA and their big brains shocking. Let's find out in today's episode. First, let's take a closer look at the design of the Raptor 3. At first glance, I thought it was a 3D render because it's just so sleek. The design of the Raptor 3 is truly simple and elegant, with most of the flanges and manifolds significantly minimized. So where did all those complex valves and pipes go? Many of them have been eliminated, and the remaining ones are integrated directly into the engine's body. There could be many flow paths we can't see inside, which help reduce the combustion chamber temperature and limit the heat transfer between engines. With this method, they've reduced the dry weight of the engine, and it doesn't require any heat shielding or fire suppression systems. This is called active cooling. So now instead of installing thousands of small parts, SpaceX can now assemble a few larger but more complex components. Despite the complexity of each big one, the production speed of complex engine parts can still be optimized further. It's likely that SpaceX uses laser 3D printing technology to create large parts of the engine, allowing for the rapid production of prototypes. For mass production and cost reduction, these large parts might be replaced by more intricate castings. Complex casting allows for higher production volumes and reduced costs compared to laser printing. If I'm not mistaken, Tesla has been using high-pressure casting technology to create parts from aluminum. SpaceX might adopt and adjust Tesla's casting techniques for the Raptor engine manufacturing to facilitate mass production. The arrival of the Raptor 3 engine has sparked an incredible wave of excitement within the space tech community, but it hasn't been without its controversies. Notably, it seems to have reignited the fierce comparison between the Raptor 3 and its rival, Blue Origin's BE-4, within the community. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, ULA, expressed his dissatisfaction in a tweet. They have done an excellent job making the assembly simpler and more producible. So, there is no need to exaggerate this by showing a partially assembled engine without controllers, fluid management, or TVC systems, Bruno's reaction is understandable. The BE-4, a product of Blue Origin, is a bulky beast, but its specs fall short compared to the Raptor 3. Naturally, the public praise has leaned towards the Raptor 3, which seems to have left Tori feeling quite disgruntled, deeming the comparisons unfair. However, it appears Bruno is mistaken in his assessment. The Raptor 3 shown in the shared images is not an unfinished engine, as he believes. It is actually a fully assembled engine, but it's the base model. It's important to note that the Raptor 3 is designed to be used in various positions on the Starship rocket. If it's one of the 20 engines on the outer ring, it doesn't need a TVC system. Conversely, if it's used as a gimbaled engine, capable of adjusting direction, this is the hallmark of SpaceX's modular and flexible design strategy. Tori repeatedly insists that his intentions were genuine and that his tweet was merely a compliment. Do you sense that his praise was purely genuine? The image of the Raptor 3 we're discussing is the realization of the 3D rendering SpaceX released earlier this April. While the company has been testing the Raptor 3 since mid last year. This is the first fully completed prototype. This is confirmed by the number one on the engine's body. Prior to this, SpaceX only used temporary test models to gather initial data. In terms of performance, the Raptor 3 has shown significant improvements over its predecessor. According to the specs released by SpaceX on Platform X, the Raptor 3 achieves a specific impulse of 350 seconds, which is considerably higher than the Raptor 2's 327 seconds. This means the new engine can use fuel more efficiently a crucial factor in optimizing costs and extending the rocket's range. Another standout feature of the Raptor 3 is its weight. It is 105 kilos lighter than the Raptor 2, marking a significant step forward in reducing the rocket's overall weight. When considering the engine along with vehicle-side commodities and hardware mounted on the vehicle, the total mass is just 17 in 20 keter. Let's consider the impact of this improvement on a larger scale. For a booster using 33 Raptor engines, the reduction in weight for each engine will create a significant cumulative effect. Specifically, the booster will be up to 38 tons lighter. This is an impressive figure, bringing numerous benefits. Firstly, increased payload capacity. With a lighter weight, the booster can carry more fuel, thereby extending its range or allowing it to carry a larger payload into orbit indicating how much thrust it can generate compared to its own weight. To truly grasp the significance of this metric, let's compare the Raptor 3 with one of the most efficient engines currently in operation, SpaceX's own Merlin 1D. The Merlin 1D has set a very high bar in the industry with a thrust-to-weight ratio of 184, the highest among all active rocket engines. This figure reflects its ability to generate immense thrust from a relatively light engine. Now the Raptor 3 is proving it can compete head-to-head -head with this benchmark, weighing in at just 1,000 525 kilder and capable of producing up to 
280 metric tons of thrust, the Raptor 3 matches Merlin 1D's impressive thrust-to-weight ratio. This is indeed a remarkable achievement. Recently, a photo surfaced showing the Raptor 3 mounted on a test stand, signaling that the first full engine tests are just around the corner. This is a crucial milestone in the development process, as engineers will finally get a chance to assess the engine's performance under operational conditions. Seeing the Raptor 3 in its upcoming static test will undoubtedly be a thrilling moment. I can't wait to witness the true power of these Raptor 3 beasts as they roar to life in a static fire. Even without undergoing comprehensive testing, the Raptor 3 has already showcased its extraordinary potential. To grasp the true power of this engine, let's compare it with the legendary RS-25, the engine that helped launch the space shuttle into orbit and is now used on the SLS. This comparison will highlight how the Raptor 3 represents a significant leap forward in rocket engine technology, one that could even astound the brilliant minds at NASA. First off, just look at their physical forms and the differences are striking. The RS-25 is a massive engine with a complex structure and numerous components. Weighing in at a hefty 3,250 key, it's nearly twice as heavy as the Raptor 3. This heft translates to a thrust-to-weight ratio of only about 73.1 for the RS-25, which pales in comparison to the Raptor 3's impressive figures. The RS-25 design is indeed a production and assembly challenge. It's an older design from decades ago that hasn't leveraged modern manufacturing processes. For instance, the RS-25 has thousands of small tubes that need to be crafted with extreme precision, positioned, bent, and welded together, all of which are done by hand. This process is not only costly, but also incredibly time-consuming. As a result, the RS-25's production rate is incredibly slow. This is a fundamental challenge NASA faces, impacting not only their budget, but also their manufacturing capabilities. Aerojet, the producer of the RS-25, can only manufacture an average of five engines per year. This means NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, can only manage one launch per year, regardless of how much funding is available. With such limited launch frequency, building an ambitious space exploration program with the SLS becomes a formidable task. On the flip side, SpaceX has achieved an unprecedented production rate of one engine per day. However, even with this impressive pace, it still takes over a month to produce enough Raptors for a single booster. This rate remains too slow for their ambitious goals, prompting SpaceX to plan for the automation and mass production of the Raptor 3. As a result, we can expect the frequency of space flights to increase significantly. While the Raptor 3 may look simpler and more compact, it outperforms the RS-25 in several critical aspects. The Raptor 3 generates up to 280 tons of thrust, far surpassing the 190 tons of the RS-25. Moreover, the Raptor 3's chamber pressure reaches up to 350 bar, a substantial increase compared to the RS-25's 206 bar. It's clear which engine packs more power, isn't it? And let's not forget the crucial topic of production costs. Musk has revealed that the production cost of the Raptor engine is around $1 million. Given that the Raptor 3 hasn't yet entered mass production, we can assume its cost might be a bit higher. Now, what about the RS-25? Honestly, the exact production cost is a bit of a mystery, but NASA is paying Aerojet Rocketdyne $100 million per engine. That's enough to build nearly 100 Raptors. And remember, when the RS-25 is used on the SLS, it's not reusable. No wonder SLS has so few launches, especially with each launch costing a staggering $4 billion. It's not too hard to understand. With the RS-25, it's taxpayer money at play. The Raptor, on the other hand, is about making cost-effective, high-volume production a reality, exactly what's needed for a sustainable space economy. If I didn't need to produce a large number of engines within a specific time frame, and if those engines were meant to generate revenue, I wouldn't be pushing for innovation either. I'd just build them to meet the technical requirements. It seems that's precisely what Aerojet Rocketdyne is doing. With SpaceX unveiling the Raptor 3 now, it's likely we'll see it integrated into the Starship V2, which is expected to launch early next year. Elon Musk has hinted, in a few years, we will finally have a Raptor 3 per 4 vacuum version, giant nozzle, that has an ISP of 380. That means improvements are far from over. Soon enough, we'll be seeing the Raptor 4. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.